I created the painting that you can see for a sip and paint studio where I used to instruct classes. And uh, my cousin's daughter, Erica, saw the painting and really liked it. So I told her I would create one for her. And her painting is going to be on this 12 by 12 inch canvas. And I'm going to be using a lot of my really nice artist quality paints and brushes and um, palette knife I'll use also. I might use my permanent patch my sure stick permanent patch 101 that I have used in previous videos because it creates a nice texture I'm not sure yet though I'll see what I feel like when I get to that point so the painting that I do today will be very similar to the one that I did for the class since you like that one I'll use a lot of similar colors but I'll have a lot more variety of colors to choose from since I'm doing it at home here in my own studio so the first step was to put in this basic outline and these will be the two cliffs and the waterfall will be coming from back here and um, I changed it up a little bit because this is on a square it used to be more rectangular shape taller than it was wide and I think it'll still work nicely for the composition I want the eye to be able to go right to the waterfall I can do that depending on how the colors going here and I can make that a focal point that way and then I have a lot of nice colors that I can use for my water. So to start out, I'm going to first paint in my sky. I like to start with the sky, kind of set the mood for the painting. And my brush is just my, my standard brush that I use for just about everything. It's, um, it's a filbert, which just means that it's a curved end. And I'm using all acrylic paints. If you haven't painted before, I start by dipping my brush in the water and then I just dab it off a little bit on the napkin so that it isn't too wet. Then I load my brush by taking a little bit of purple, a little bit of white, and then I just start painting it in. So I'm not real careful about where I have what on the brush. And then as I go along I can decide what I want to do and with just the same as with all of my other paintings, acrylic painting is all about layering. So I will probably end up with several layers on here. I'm lightening it up as I come down to the water line because I want that water to stand out and it, I'll, I'll make it a little darker. It doesn't matter if I run over the lines here because that will be covered up later. I think that's why I like I like to start with the sky for a couple of reasons. It sets the tone for the painting, but it also it also is the furthest away. That way I can start building up layers with textures out here, which is especially important when you're using a palette knife. Because I'm going to lay down the, the paint fairly heavy. And being that this is a gallery wrapped canvas. I also need to get the top and the sides. And I can always come back and work on that. Now the next part I'm going to just put the base coat underneath my cliffs and the water. I'm not using a palette knife for that. I like to lay down a complete coat that covers the canvas really well. And then I come back with my palette knife and I start layering. And that's when I'll have to decide whether I want to use my wall patch to build up texture or if I just want to do it with paint and palette that works real well too. Another color that's really nice to use in place of actual black is raw umber. Raw umber is a brown definitely not the blue gray it's to the brown but it's very dark
Now you could just start right out here with using the palette knife, but like I said, I kind of like to get a base coat down. This is a real nice brush. It's flat, straight across on the end, on the edge. And um, it's just an artist loft level three, which the levels that they use just have to do with the quality of the brush. My brushes aren't super expensive, but I cannot use real inexpensive brushes. Um, they do not work and you'd be very unhappy. Quality of brush makes a big difference. And another thing to keep in mind, if this came down farther than this side, then this would be closer to us. If I end this even with that, then as far as the distance from the eye, it tells you they're the same distance because their base is the same. This is water, so water is going to be level. It's not like it's going to be changing that way. Now when I come back with my palette, because I have some colors already down here, that will help bring in the depth also. The more, the more you add in layers, this is just my opinion, the way that I paint, the more I add in layers, the more depth I have to my painting. This is ultramarine blue. It's got just a tiny bit of a purple tone to it. And this is deep cobalt blue. And being that this is a water, I'll just keep it going back and forth this way. So I'm playing around with colors. You can see this is this is ultramarine blue. This is cobalt blue. They're similar, but I don't know if you can see much difference on the camera there, but um, there is a bit of a difference. Now I have a larger brush if I wanted to just get that laid down quickly. Something like this can work really nicely too, but I'm kind of playing around with colors here, so this is fine. This gives me an idea of what I might want to do later. When I'm finished with the palette knife, I'll come back and do some more of kind of like what I just did. You can see where that, it's almost like it's um, a light layer. And you can get that effect by adding a medium to the paint. That Instead of adding too much water to the paint, you add a medium. And you can get an effect like um, translucent water. Now sometimes when you are working with acrylics, if you go over an area, you'll actually pull up some paint a little bit. So you might have to just wait till an area dries. Okay, so now I have my base coat on other than across the bottom and I'll do that as well. And I'll let that dry a little bit and then I will come back and start adding the palette knife. Now again, I could have just made that all a solid color and that would have been fine too because I'll, I could add the palette knife over and bring in whatever colors I want, but I just kind of wanted to play around with the color at this point. And I like to keep my paints in these Ziploc bags when I'm in between painting because it, it actually keeps it really nice for me. The paints don't dry out. Now for my Cliffs, I've decided not to use the wall patch. If you would like to see how the wall patch is used, I highly recommend my painting of um, seaside cliffs. It's really a fun thing to use and it makes really beautiful effects. But since I have a lot of color down already, I think I'm go just going to go ahead and use just the paint with the palette knife. and. I like this palette knife. I get it at Michael's. It's just made of plastic. I have a metal one, but the problem with the metal is sometimes they get little kinks or bends in them. 
I'm using the same colors that I was using before, but I'm going to add cadmium yellow, deep hue, and vermilion just to kind of brighten up the um, cliffs a bit. So when I work with um, my palette knife, I like to take one side and I put it in the paint. If you, if you watch my video on seaside poppies, I, I show you a lot of technique in that as well. You go down with the side that has the paint on it. And in that video, I also go back and forth this way. These are cliffs though, and the rock comes downward this way. So I'm going to keep my strokes vertical. But if I take it and kind of run it a little bit sideways like this, you can see that it it adds kind of like a little ledge there, a ridge on the rock. <clears throat> and you can go ahead and put it in different colors. You don't have to feel like you have to keep it all on the same. So you can see now that I'm changing what I had before because I'm going over it. But any place that shows through, uh, it gives a little more dimension to the rock, you know, like I was saying. So that's why I still paint underneath, even though a lot of it may get painted out later. And I'm throwing in some of the, the other colors that I had, a little bit of blue to keep this colorful. And, um, and you can change the looks of it by, if I were to add a little bit of light color and bring it out here, see how that just kind of makes that pop out forward. I can make something look a little further away by having a darker tone. If I throw in a little bit of red and I have something on this side and I, that's okay, I just let that come into it. So that's kind of pretty. So this is just with the painted on streaks and that's pretty. But when you come back and you add that palette work over it, it just brings out a whole different new dimension. Which is really nice and back up in there I can I can either kind of if I come out here that that kind of makes that pop forward um, so you can make a an area of the rock look like it's standing out forward from the rest or you can make it look like it's standing further away So I'll let that dry a bit and then I will do the same type of palette work on the water and on the waterfall and then I will decide if I want to add any little, I do a little palette work up here, we'll see. I want to have white so that I can mix it in with some of these other colors. So I'm just going to start kind of playing around here with laying down some tones for water. And if I throw in a little white, that kind of adds some little white cap looking things. I can scratch that in. Don't want too much, I don't want too much green. And I'm doing a kind of a twisting, twisting and turning. I lay it like this and then I go like that sort of. And that kind of gives it, I, I lay it flat and then I switch it. And I just kind of keep doing that and sometimes I go straighter across but that kind of gives it that motion that's in the water. It's starting to look like it's churning water now. So we're now adding a different dimension to the painting than what we had before. It was very pretty before but but now we we have movement. Throw in other colors as well. Nothing wrong with having a little purple down here. Now, green tends to make water look a little bit deeper. So I've got white tossed in there, so that changes it up a bit. But just plain green can make water look like it's it's deep. There's a darkness to it there. And then I kind of have to decide what I want to do back in here. This is this is choppy water for sure back in that way. So 
so I can kind of do some sort of fuzzy stuff like this. This is a small, a small area to work with. Sometimes it's almost easier to, I've found that it's easier to work with a large canvas actually than a real small canvas. Add it in just a little hint of the purple down here. Adding the purple down into this area kind of balances out the sky. And Got just a little bit of white around in different areas here, and I can add a little more there to kind of brighten that up. And your your brain almost interprets that as maybe there's a little rock there or something that's adding to the turbulence that adds to the the white little white caps. And you can add as much of that as you want. You don't want to do too much, but just enough to kind of make it interesting. I'm working with a kind of a small canvas here, so I might start, I might use this side. And if I'm still not quite happy, I can come back and, yeah, see that? That's a little bit easier. Some people aren't really comfortable with a palette knife, and I really recommend that if you're not, that you just give it a, give it a little more of a shot, because, um, Try, try it with a few different types of paintings and I think you'll find that you really like it. And I can come back and add a sharper edge on that cliff there so that it comes back again to the front because the cliffs are in front of the waterfall, of course. So the waterfall needs to be noticeable, but it needs to look like it's behind, of course. Okay, so that's it for today. I'll let that sit overnight and look at it quite a bit and decide how to finish it off. I want to make sure it's all balanced and has different areas of color that tie the sky with the water. Pretty happy with that, but I feel like I need to build up the cliffs a little bit more and do just a bit on the sky. Okay, I changed a, just one more thing before I decided to quit for the day. I brought these cliffs up a little bit and I brought the waterfall up. I wanted the waterfall to be a little bit higher because I want to have a feeling of height here and I felt it was just squashed down a little bit too much before. So I like this overall composition better. Just that little bit of a rise in the cliff height I think helped a lot. Okay, I decided that I wanted the cliffs to stand out a little bit more. And because of that, I am going to use my wall patch. This is Permanent Patch 101 by SureStick. I bought this at Lowe's or Home Depot. And... Um, I'm thinking about my light source with this as well. It's not a real heavy sunset with gorgeous color, so the sun isn't necessarily right back there. It's more of sort of a late, late in the day sky or maybe um, kind of a stormy sky. 
So the light could be coming from up this way. And to help these edges stand out a bit more, I'm going to make some of them a little bit lighter. And what I do with my wall patch, this is a wall patch that is kind of a, um, well, it's called flexible patching and caulking compound. Um, this is the one that I use in my cliffs, seaside cliffs painting that I showed earlier. I use it because I can really build up a lot of texture and surface three-dimensional areas. And what I do is I take the wall patch and I mix it directly with the paint. And it works really nicely. Uh, you could also put down the wall patch and then later come back and paint over it. So there's different things you can do with it. Um, I can even put some wall patch down and then add some paint to it. But see, it just makes it pop out a bit more than what you can do with just paint. And I felt like this needed something more. Now, if I had brought this cliff down a little further here, this would be more obvious that the waterfall is in the back. The waterfall could be coming over a piece of rock that's lower, but I meant for this to be that the waterfall is back in there. If you were in a little boat, you would actually go around the corner here, around behind the cliffs, and back in there would be this lower area that has the waterfall. So you kind of have to picture it like that. I really like this wall patch. And being that it's it's meant to patch walls of a house and then be painted in an area where you need it to be flexible. I used to do a lot of um, remodeling of old houses and if you just simply put plaster down or even regular wall patching. Um, if you had a crack in the wall, then sure enough, it would reappear again in a few years. So um, I used to just use regular caulk. Then they came out with this stuff, which is really nice. So don't be afraid to use a mixture of mediums. I mean, I, I have my brushwork in here. I have palette knife and I have this patching medium. And I just play around until my brain tells me it's okay now. And I think just for fun, I always like to do a little bit of finger painting. I just toss in a little bit of that as well. When you're finger painting, you should use gloves. So I need to tell you that I'm not using gloves. Finger painting gives you a little bit different type of an effect that I kind of like. So when you're painting, try several different things. Now I have a little bit of the paint's gray, then I'm coming back and adding a bit of dimension to the waterfall with because I feel like I need a little bit of highlight in there. Putting a little bit of Prussian blue. Now I say I'm, I need highlight and then I'm adding something dark, but what I mean is I need contrast. Something to give a little more depth to that. 
and by adding a little bit of dark behind it and I could use a palette knife for this or um, or my fingers like I'm doing there but by adding a little bit of dark behind it it helps it helps the lighter areas pop out a little more My eye was telling me that this is just a tiny bit short on that side, and I think that's right. It's just a hair, but it's a tiny bit, and it's bothering me. So I'm kind of bringing that in a little bit darker even. This is the kind of thing that I enjoy is when I when I get something basically finished, but I want to go back and add the final little details. I love doing things like cliffs and rocks. When this is finished drying, I will add one final coating, and this is a non-yellowing, moisture-resistant acrylic coating, Krylon Crystal Clear. 
and I have started using this on all of my paintings because it's not too glossy. It just gives a very nice sheen to the painting and it helps the colors really pop. And I think it's nice to have that protectant on it. Thank you for watching my video and remember to subscribe.